अनुसंधान ऑल गुजरात इंटीग्रेटेड क्लासरूम सैटेलाइट ना माध्यम थी जोड़ती कड़ी इतले संधान हेलो फ्रेंड्स हियर वी आर विथ अनादर एडिशन ऑफ अ लेक्चर ऑन फिक्शन फिक्शन इज आफ्टर ऑल नॉवेल्स एंड नॉवेल्स समथिंग विच यू ऑल लव टू रीड वेल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट जुम्पा लाहिरीज द नेम सेक वट मेक्स यू पिक अप अ नॉवेल समटाइम्स इट्स द टाइटल इट्स सेल्फ एंड यू मे वेल वंडर वट दिस टाइटल इज ऑल अबाउट इज अ नेम सो इम्पॉर्टेंट आफ्टर ऑल द ग्रेट बार्ड ऑफ एवन टोल्ड अस अ रोज बाय एनी अदर नेम स्वेल्स जस्ट अ स्वीट बट वेल आर नेम इज वॉट गिव्स अस आर आइडेंटिटी एंड लेट्स सी वॉट जुम्पा लाहेरे डज इन दिस नॉवल द नेम सेक हर फर्स्ट नॉवल लेट्स हैव अ क्विक लुक एट द बुक्स दैट शी रोट so that's jumpa lahiri for you and we have the first book that she wrote the interpreter of maladies which is actually a collection of short stories where she takes us from boston to bengal and beyond you know there is the us there and there is india also her second work is the namesake which we are going to talk about today in this lecture The namesake is Jumpa Lahiri's first novel, but her second published book. Her third book is called Unaccustomed Earth, and is again a collection of short stories. Though the stories are much longer than they were in her first collection of stories, Unaccustomed Earth, and then we have the Lowland, which is set in the Bengal. of the 1960s and 70s well today we are going to look at only one book and that is the name's sake her first work of fiction let's try and first look at what we know of her as far as the biographical details are concerned she was actually born as and christened nay as nilanjana sudeshna lahiri she was born on the 11th of july 1967 you may well ask my dear friends well if she is nilanjana sudeshna lahiri how did she become jumpa lahiri and thereby hangs a tale a t a l e a story because in bengal even today there is what is called a dark naam a dark naam is a name by which you are called your family your friends people close to you your informal circle your intimate circle they all call you by your dark naam which here is jhumpa but then you have another name which the bengalis call the bhalo naam bhalo actually means good so your good name shubh naam as we would say in hindi and that refers to the name by which you are known officially that would be the name in your school college office that would be the name in your certificates that would be the name in your passport that is the name by which you are formally known well the name sake too is about one such name but we'll come to that later we are still looking at nilanjana sudeshna lahiri born on the 11th of july 1967 she studied in england her notable works are as i've already mentioned to you interpreter of maladies the namesake unaccustomed earth the lowland she has won awards the o henry award and the more important 2000 in 2000 the pulitzer prize for fiction what is jumpa lahiri writing about in all the books to date of course there's another book after the lowland but i'm not going to talk about that now what does she write about she writes about a dilemma a problem 
something that is there in her life and in the lives of many others like her who today we refer to as the diasporic look at what she says here the way my parents explain it to me is that they have spent their immigrant lives feeling as if they are on a river with a foot in two different boats she relates you must have heard the expression riding on two horses you know how difficult it is riding on two horses at the same time my dear friends can you imagine she puts it a little differently and she says they are on a river because ever moving and what's happening a foot one foot in one boat and the other foot in another boat quite a comic scene you might imagine but no there's more pain there's more anguish each boat wants to pull them in a separate direction and my parents are always stone between the two they are always hovering literally straddling two worlds what are these two worlds my dear friends the country in which you were born the country in which you now live you have chosen to give up your motherland and go to live in another country we refer to these people as the diasporic and i'm going to talk about that in greater detail but to look at this that she quotes from her parents feeling they are not comfortable probably in either of the two places what are these two places the country in which they were born let us imagine as in the case of jumpa lairi the land to which you belong what you would call your motherland and that is india and then at some stage in life they decide to move they move on to another country they live in another country they make it their home they probably become citizens of that country but yet there is always that something pulling at your heart that tugging of the heart strings do i belong here or do i belong somewhere else where is that else what we refer to as the land of one's birth often it could be that you are the second generation which means that your parents were born in india and they moved to the us and you were born in the us so your memories of india what your parents refer to as their motherland might not be very clear might be vague but yet there is that what we call the sandwich culture belonging neither here nor there spending all your life in that process of acculturation trying to belong trying to learn trying to mix and this is what the namesake is all about so what did her parents say it was like having one foot in each boat and the boats pulling in different directions and therefore straddling two boats two lives not a very comfortable situation but a very common one in the post colonial era so we come to that important word the diaspora i mentioned in passing that we would call jumpa lahiri a diasporic writer well the word diaspora originally referred to the large scale migration of jews that is where the word came from diaspora spreading out they came they went because they were persecuted so there is somewhere the meaning of being persecuted and therefore being forced to leave but the word diaspora over the years over centuries i should be saying has someone somewhere changed its original meaning today we use the word diaspora and diasporic to refer to the person who has moved from one land to another so the word diaspora to refer to any moving from one place to another one country to another remember it's not the same as migration because after all migration would mean that for a part of the year like the birds do coming from siberia all the way to our own sanctuaries of thol and nalsorovar in near amdabad in gujarat 
Well, that is migration because after a certain period, two months, three months, six months, whatever it may be, they go back to where they came from. In this case, if I'm thinking of flamingos and pelicans, they go back to Siberia. So do not confuse the two words. Diaspora is very different from migration. It usually refers to a kind of a permanent shift of residence from one country to another. Well, what are the main characteristics of what we today call the diaspora? Number one, there is today no persecution generally which makes you shift. If we look at Indians, for example, who have moved out of India to other countries, usually to developed countries, to what I would refer as greener pastures, it would be because they want better education, they want better job opportunities, they want to earn more, etc., etc. So I would like you to remember that the meaning of the word diaspora has changed a great deal. So when Jhumpa Lahiri's parents decided to leave their home state of Bengal in India, they made a conscious decision to leave this country and move to another country, probably knowing fully well that there would be a number of adjustments, lot of adjustments, lot of anguish, lot of heartburn before they really begun, begin to feel that they belong there. So let's remember what the origin of the word is and what it means in today's context. The word diaspora naturally does not refer only to Indians who move from one place to another. It refers to anyone. So you could have, for example, somebody like Yasmin Gunaratne, who is a Sri Lankan, who left Sri Lanka and moved to Australia. Well, she is also a diasporic writer. You could have many other writers. If you look at the Indian writers of today, you could think of somebody like Bharti Mukherjee, for example, who left India. She's the first generation, unlike Jhumpa Lairi, and she moved first to the US, then to Canada, married a Canadian, and is now settled there. So, well, you have a writer like Bharti Mukherjee. When you look around, you would see a number of writers who have left their country and begun to live in another country. What is the major feeling that these people have? They ask themselves, are they insiders or are they outsiders? Insider where, my dear friends? Insider? in the land in which they've now gone to live? Or are they the outsider there because they've come from another country? Well then, are they insiders in the country from which they hail, but then they've gone to live in another country and so they become outsiders? Can you understand the paradox, the dichotomy that exists here? Absurd though it may sound, it's a fact that they seem to be insiders in neither place. Well, if they are insiders in neither place, do they become outsiders in both the places? That is the angst of the diasporic. And that comes across very well in a novel like The Namesake and many more novels. As I mentioned, Bharti Mukherjee, let me talk of a novel like The Tiger's Daughter or a novel like, the Jas or like Jasmine and many more. Anyway, to come back to the chief characteristics of diaspora, the last point, if you notice on this slide, my dear friends, is something called sandwich culture. You know what a sandwich is? Two slices of bread and something put in between which most of us have as a quick meal because it's easy to make and most of the things are already there in the house. You don't spend a lot of time in the kitchen when you have to prepare a sandwich for yourself. So you can just pick up a sandwich. But here we are not talking about eating a sandwich. No, my dear friends, we are looking at the position of the diasporic. In the new land, in the land 
to which he now wants to belong, he is in a sandwich culture. He's actually the filling between two slices of bread. And what are the two slices of bread? On one side, the country where he comes from, and on the other side, the country in which he now lives. So he is pressed, pulled by two conflicting ideas, values, cultures, traditions, language, food, dress, behavior, etiquette. In every which way there is this confusion. What do I do? Do I do what I was expected to do where I was born? Or do I do what I'm expected to do where I now live? That is what is meant by sandwich culture. And this the diasporic experiences day in and day out till he gets acclimatized to the new culture. Till he's able to sit back and say, no, I belong here. I don't feel diasporic anymore. But that's a long, long time in coming. So let us now come to the namesake. The namesake, as I mentioned to you, is a novel by Jhumpa Lahiri. Let's quickly look at the main characters. And as we look at the characters, I will also give you a short idea of the story. Of course, I begin by imagining, and I'm sure I'm right in imagining, that all of you know what the story is about. But yet, in order to understand the characters well, I shall tell you something about them and about what happens to them. The protagonist at the beginning of the story is probably Alok Ganguly because he sets the novel into motion. As the novel progresses, Gogol Ganguly, the son of Alok and Ashima, becomes the protagonist. After all, the namesake 